Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson, and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast aimed at intermediate to advanced level English learners. Thinking in a foreign language is a vital step on the road to fluency, and this podcast aims to help you achieve this by discussing various topics ranging from current events to science, philosophy, economics, and much more. On today's episode, we will discuss the recent discovery of signs of life on the planet Venus, talk about why it is surprising, and think about whether searching for alien life is important. But first, here is today's vocabulary list. Please check for description of the podcast for the written list. Phosphine. Phosphine. A gas, a mixture of hydrogen and phosphorus. Extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial. Not from planet Earth. For example, in those rocks may lie the best chance of finding extraterrestrial life. Atmosphere. Atmosphere. A mixture of gases around a planet. For example, these factories are releasing toxic gases into the atmosphere. Astrobiologist. Astrobiologist. A scientist studying the possibility of life in other parts of the universe. For example, astrobiologists believe there may be life on Saturn's moon Titan. Inhospitable. Inhospitable. An area not suitable to live in. For example, nothing can live in this in inhospitable environment. Scorching. Scorching. Very hot. For example, it was a scorching summer's day. Habitability. Habitability. The potential for life to live on a planet. For example, they are using this telescope to determine that planet's habitability. To flourish. To flourish. Grow or develop healthily. For example, parts of the city continue to flourish. Desolate. Desolate. Empty and not attractive, with no people or nothing pleasant about it. For example, the house stood in a bleak and desolate landscape. The search for extraterrestrial life took an unexpected and unbelievable turn last week, with the potential discovery of a gas in the atmosphere of Venus that could be a sign of life. Scientists believe that they have found traces of phosphine, a toxic compound of hydrogen and phosphorus, that has been identified by astrobiologists as a potential indicator for life on other planets. Using powerful radio telescopes and studying the way light was absorbed by the planet's atmosphere, they determined that there must be phosphine present. The way light interacts with different atoms and molecules varies, and consequently, it is possible to identify the chemical composition of things by studying light. However, phosphine was a completely unexpected discovery. The gas, which is produced by living organisms on Earth, should not be able to exist for long on the toxic and inhospitable planet. 
something must be replenishing the gas for it to consistently appear in the scientist's data. One possibility is an unknown and mysterious chemical process. Or, more excitingly, biological life. This discovery is even more astonishing when you consider the environment of Venus. Despite not being the closest planet to the Sun, Venus is by far the hottest in our solar system. Surface temperatures can reach a terrifying 470 degrees Celsius, which would leave metals like lead as puddles of liquid. These temperatures are a result of Venus's incredibly thick atmosphere of greenhouse gases and clouds of sulfuric acid, which trap in the heat. Venus's surface is almost certainly too inhospitable for life. The atmosphere does, however, have many layers of different temperatures. At the level where clouds are, for instance, about 30 miles up from the surface, it's about the same temperature as on the surface of the Earth. This leaves us with the bizarre prospect that microbial activity, the key source of phosphine on Earth, may be occurring in the scorching, acidic clouds above Venus. This means that Venus is now a surprising new entry on the list of potential life in our solar system. A list which currently includes the distant frozen moons of Jupiter and the methane-filled lakes of Saturn's moon Titan. For years, life was thought to be fragile. But recently, ideas have been changing. Life has now been seen living in nuclear waste, in highly acidic waters, in undersea vents where temperatures and pressures reach colossal levels, and on panels bolted to the outside of the International Space Station and exposed to the vacuum of space for years. If life can survive in these hostile conditions, then perhaps it can survive in the atmosphere of Venus. So what happens next? Well, at first, the data needs to be confirmed. Astronomers are now hoping to follow up for discovery by using other telescopes on Earth to find out more evidence. As well as verifying its presence, telescopes could offer more data on where the phosphine is located and how its levels vary over days and weeks. There are actually three spacecraft already scheduled to fly close to Venus, a joint European and Japanese mission to Mercury, as well as separate European and American missions to the Sun. These could potentially observe Venus on their way, but they don't actually have the correct technology to identify phosphine. There is also a spacecraft currently orbiting Venus, Japan's Akatsuki mission, which entered orbit in 2015 and is studying Venus's weather and searching for volcanoes. Although it lacks the tools required to spot phosphine directly, it could help in other ways. More promising are future planned missions. The Indian Space Research Organization has a Venus orbiter planned to launch in 2025. The United States and Europe are also contemplating missions to Venus that could provide useful data on the planet's potential habitability, or even directly search for signs of life. So here are today's final thoughts. Are we alone? Is the solar system empty of life? Is Earth unique? An incredible accident of life flourishing in an otherwise desolate, uninhabitable and lifeless universe? Or is there something out there? Personally, considering the size and scale of the universe, these questions are not that important. Mathematically, I refuse to accept that life only developed on one planet in our entire ever-expanding universe. More important questions are what is out there and does it matter? Is it worth investing time and money on searching for signs of life? 
there are still parts of our planet that we don't know and have not explored. From the depths of the oceans and the peaks of the mountains, to the hearts of rainforests and the endless landscapes of tundras. Should we not focus on understanding our own planet before we search for others? And what is the motivation for finding other life? Money, exploration, curiosity? For the average person, this, the discovery of alien life in our solar system will almost certainly be underwhelming. Microbes aren't exactly what we imagine when we talk of aliens. But curiosity in itself is an incredibly successful motivator and is maybe enough for us to start our search. What do you think? Today's comprehension questions. Please check the description below for the answers. What gas has been discovered in the atmosphere of Venus? How hot can the surface of Venus be? What country's spacecraft is currently orbiting Venus? Thank you for listening to today's episode of Thinking in English. Share with your friends, check out our social media links in the description and send us a message. We appreciate all feedback and constructive criticism. If you have any ideas for topics, future podcasts, guests or other learning formats, please let us know. And please leave us a rating. Thank you and see you next time.